Tell me if this story sounds familiar. In a stable surrounded by animals and hay, Mary gives birth to Jesus after Joseph is turned away by an innkeeper doing their best to serve an overwhelming number of visitors that have shown up for the census. Thus, on that oh holy night, when this young couple arrived in town, they could only find this dirty stable for shelter. And during this silent night in the little town of Bethlehem, the Lord has come. It's a story that is often told, but unfortunately, it's a story that is it's just wrong. Now, I'm not saying that Jesus wasn't born of Mary or that shepherds were not watching their flocks by night, but the idea of the full inn, the stable, and the lonely birth of the king of the universe just doesn't line up with the historical reality of that time. What we would find is a young mother giving birth surrounded by people inside a house, and yes, there would be an animal or two nearby. Now to show why this is, let's take a look at each part of this story. So first off, it is clear from Luke's account that Jesus was not born the night that they arrived. Like Luke 2.6 says, while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. So despite countless nativity plays, Mary is not on the verge of giving birth while Joseph is desperately trying to find shelter for them. Instead, there was an undisclosed amount of time between their arrival to Bethlehem and the arrival of Jesus. Therefore, we must either wonder at how they spent at least a few days living in a barn, or maybe, just like the misreading about the timing of the birth, we have misread what Luke meant when he says, an inn. Now, we live in a world where it makes sense that Bethlehem would have some kind of commercial establishment where people could stay. I mean, it seems like Every other house this day is being made into an Airbnb. But Jesus wasn't born in a modern day Western country. He was born in a small village in the Middle East. That isn't to say there were no such things as inns back then, but these inns would have been found along major roads or cities. And Bethlehem was neither a city nor on a major road. Now, the problem becomes apparent when you look at the word that is often translated as in, Cataluma. Cataluma is only used three times in scripture. It's used here in Luke 2, and then in Mark 14 and Luke 22. And in both of those other passages, it's used when Jesus is, is instructing his disciples on how to find the guest room, Cataluma, where they will eat the Last Supper, like in Luke 22:11. Cataluma clearly is referencing some kind of guest room, not an ancient holiday inn. And in the parable of the Good Samaritan, the Samaritan does bring the injured man to an inn, and the Greek word Luke, Luke uses there is pandokeon, not Cataluma. In other words, they were not turned away from an inn. There was just not enough room to give birth in an overcrowded guest room. And the problem with this whole inn business is that we often read our cultural ideas anachronistically back into the text. And that's just a fancy way of saying that we imagine the people that we are reading about 2,000 years ago acted and thought like we do today. And not only that, but we place on these ancient Middle Eastern people a Western worldview. However, once you understand their cultural values, this idea of a couple being rejected just falls apart. For instance, Dr. Ken Bailey gives us insight into why the rejection of this young married couple just doesn't make cultural sense when he says things like, the Middle Easterner is profoundly attached to his village of family origin. What this means is that even if a person never grew up in the village, all they needed to do was state their genealogy and they would have just been immediately accepted. Joseph also could have easily referenced his lineage and his link to David, which would have immediately opened doors. And even if Joseph did not do either of these things, the simple fact that he had a pregnant wife ready to give birth would have made him a welcome guest in any home. As Bailey points out, when a proper understanding of culture and custom is in view, the idea that a woman about to give birth cannot find shelter and assistance from the village women in a Middle Eastern village, even if she is a total stranger, just it staggers the imagination. But Shelby, you may be thinking, well, what about the manger? Doesn't that mean that Jesus was born in a stable? No. No, it doesn't. Because the simple fact is that animals were kept inside the house. 
Like these ancient houses were built with a specific area for the animals to be kept in. And guess what was built into the structure of the house for those animals? That's right, mangers. So let's retell this story. So after traveling across their small nation, Joseph and Mary show up in the town of Joseph's family line. Either after seeking a relative or by stating his ancestry, Joseph secured a place to stay. Unfortunately, many others have also shown up for the census. So on the night that Jesus is to be born, the overcrowded guest room becomes the most unsuitable place for the birth to take place. Mary is moved into the main part of the house where there is plenty of space for her child to come into the world. And after wrapping the newborn in swaddling clothes, the baby is placed in the manger, a convenient place for the child as it is built into the floor of the home. Jesus' birth is still one of humble origins. He, the king of the universe was born as a peasant and visited by shepherds, some of the lowest people on the social ladder. But what isn't true is that he was born all alone after being rejected by an overworked innkeeper. Instead, he was surrounded by friends and family. In fact, this birth in the village of Bethlehem may not have been too different from the birth of King David centuries earlier. Except this time, instead of a man after God's own heart coming into the world, it was God himself. It may not have been a silent night, but it was still a night that brought joy to the world. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you all are going to have a Merry Christmas and a wonderful New Year. I'm sorry there was such a big break between the last video and now. Uh, I've been working really hard on my thesis uh, for my master's and I'll probably talk a lot about that in the next year. But until 2024 comes, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.